On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went before the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw for as yet he did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. So Mary stood, weeping outside the tomb.
clothes fastened down. Spent the night in sleeplessness, rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow, and half in fear the day. Find the soldiers breaking through, drag a tall away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window and looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. Where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Something strange had happened there, but just what I didn't know. John believed the miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high. Cause I'd seen them crucify him, then I saw him. Everything I promised him just added to my shame. When at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. Even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. And suddenly the air was filled with strange and sweet perfume.
invite everybody to join in. You can repeat after me, okay? <laughs> we come today. We come today. And we're here to say. And we're here to say. We're looking for love. We're looking for love. In just the right way. In just the right way. For Jesus is clear. For Jesus is clear. When we listen to hear. When we listen to hear. His love for us. His love for us. Is oh so dear. Is oh so dear. Very good. Can you guys think of ways that Jesus loved?
18. Thank God because God is good, because God's love never quits. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. God's love never quits. I was right on the cliff edge, ready to fall, when God grabbed and held me. God, God is my strength, God is also my song, and now God is my salvation. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. God's love never quits. Do you hear the shouts? Hear the triumph songs in the camp of the saved? The hand of God has turned the tide. The hand of God is raised in victory. The hand of God has turned the tide. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. God's love never quits. We didn't die. We lived. And now we are telling the world that God did, what God did. God tested me, pushed me hard, but didn't hand me over to death. Swing wide the city gates, the righteous gates. I'll walk right through and thank God. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. God's love never quits. Thank you for responding to us. You've truly become our salvation. The stone the masons discarded <coughs> as flawed is now the capstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes, we can hardly believe it. This is the very day God acted. Let's celebrate and be festive. Salvation now, God, salvation now. Oh yes, God, a free and full life. Tell the world, people, God's love never quits. God's love never quits. <laughs>
Johnny Lee saying, I was looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces. Our worship series has been a riff on this song, and we have pondered some of the wrong places that we often look for love and meaning in our lives today. Places like power, certainty, status, money, approval, and material stuff. Love is something we need so desperately in our lives. It's what we were designed for. Yet something is deeply lacking. Something that is deeply lacking in our world. And so we saw Jesus bring about a different kind of love these past weeks. We saw this as he helped, welcomed, and healed people. We saw it as he offered an outsider living water, as Keegan referenced earlier. And we saw it at the cross where our good shepherd laid down his life for his friends. John, the gospel writer, tells us that early in the morning on the first day of the week, Mary went to the tomb where she found that the stone had been rolled away. She runs to let the other followers know. And Mary, Peter, and another disciple go to the tomb. They peek in, and their greatest fear becomes a reality tomb is empty. We sit here today and we know that this is good news. It's why we shout Alleluia. But it didn't make sense to them at the time. They wanted to ensure that Jesus was honored properly in a missing body. It's about as far from that as you can get. They are overcome with grief following the events of the cross. Their hearts are breaking and to add insult to injury. They believe that someone has taken Jesus' body. They're defeated, devastated, desperate for answers, desperate to experience love. How often does our experience include feelings of devastation, defeat, how often are we left in need of more, in need of love? We see this in our interactions with others, our family, friends, co-workers, even strangers. Even the best of relationships can leave us feeling this way sometimes. We can feel defeated too as we see growing hate and division in our country and Feel we will see even more of that sown before we gather again next Easter as we prepare for another big election. We act violently toward one another, and not even our children are exempt from this. As they doubt their safety in places like school. We know there is so much need for love. We see it all around us, but we know it to be true for ourselves, too. Peter and the other disciple leave the tomb with their heads hanging low, but Mary, she stays and weeps. And it, it is in her despair, in her time of deep need, that love, that the holy shows up. The angels in dazzling light appear and ask Mary why she is crying. And then Jesus himself appears. Mary doesn't recognize him at first. And she pleads with him to tell her where Jesus' body is. And then Jesus speaks her name. Mary's heard this voice. This is the voice of a friend. This is a voice of care. This voice of love. We rejoice on Easter Sunday. We shout Alleluia because of the power of love that we see this day. So powerful that it can overcome anything, yes, even death. There's a Greek word I want to teach you today. And that word is kenosis. Say it with me. Kenosis. <laughs> This word speaks to a pouring out of oneself. God's love is poured out, or kenosis, into us. This is a kind of love that cannot be stopped, it cannot be hoarded, but rather it is pouring out, it is overflowing. 
the joy and power of the Easter story is how even the worst of human hate is shown to not measure up to the power and the love that raised Christ's body from the dead. And the even greater news is that love overcoming death in the grave only brings about more love. The promise of life forever with our God. Love wins. It always has. It always will. Yes, we can look just about anywhere to, and find a deep need for love. But we know that we can find tangible signs of God's love anywhere we look to. Throughout our series, we have watched video testimonies from folks in our congregation sharing where they have caught a glimpse of the love that comes from God. Someone saw this love between siblings. Another, when people come together to volunteer for the sake of others. Still, others shared that expressions of God's love can be found in nature, in children, and in the various homes of our lives. This was from only four of you. And we know it is only the beginning of a long list of ways that God's love surrounds us today. The story of Easter is all about love having the final say, the ultimate say. God is love. And while it is hard at times to see it, we are surrounded by that love. In this place where even the flowers help proclaim this good news, as you go from here into the world and beyond into eternal life, love wins. But we must not forget that we play a role in this reality, too. As Mary runs from the tomb to preach and share the good news with the disciples and her friends, we, too, must run from here to share the good news of the empty tomb, the good news of God's life-giving love with those we encounter. Jesus tells Mary to go, and we are to rise, to go, and act in a way that reflects the love that God has kenosis poured into each and every one of us. There will be times when we fail miserably like this, but we trust that God's love will win anyway. And we continue forward the best we can so that all might experience love know their value in the eyes of our God. So let us remember that the Easter story is all about God's love for all. Let us continue looking for love in all the right places. And let us boldly live and proclaim the message that Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen.
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy. You bring abundance of life through crop creation. The green blade rises, and all creation greets the resurrection of God. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who tend to them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders. Barriers are human made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world, and all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Unite your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick, hospitalized, or hurting in any way, especially those we now name silently and alone. Risen Lord, in your mercy, you have put gladness in our hearts, inspired musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly song. <coughs> Risen Lord, in your mercy. As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll be seated for the offering.
love be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, love eternal, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we could not fathom your endless love and we turned away, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise the name of love and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
feast is laid out for all who come looking for love and vow to spread that love around with others.
Jesus at this table. May his body and blood nourish you, strengthen you, and wrap you in love. Amen. We are so grateful to see everyone here as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your love fills our hearts. This is the last week of our theme on love. But the importance of making sure the world has more love and less hate and division has struck a chord with us, as we hope it has with you, if you're visiting today. We as a church and as individuals go from here continuing to do acts of nurturing love. We want the world to know us by our love, by how we live and work together for a better world, by how we find ways to be one in the spirit of love. Regardless of whether we agree, we can love one another, because love always wins. So let us join together in love, and let us come back again next week as the season of Easter continues, with the risen Jesus appearing to the disciples.
into the world looking for love in all the right places. We will look for signs of love. We will be acts of love. We will show the world that love all these things. <clears throat>